I found 17 uncommon passive income ideas that actually make money in 2024. So before we get into it, make sure you cheers the like button and let's jump into it right now with number one on the list, which is participating in sleep studies. Yes, you can actually get paid to sleep and this might be the ultimate form of passive income. And this basically involves participating in research projects and clinical trials. And these are aimed at understanding natural sleep patterns as well as sleep disorders. And these are typically conducted by research institutions, universities, hospitals, or clinics. And in many cases, you can do these in the comfort of your home. You basically just have to hook up some equipment so that they can monitor you. And in some cases, you might actually have to go in and sleep in a clinic or a hospital setting. But this is actually legit and you can apply for this in places like clinicaltrials.gov. And there's websites such as sleepstandards.com where they'll pay you $2,000 in order to do this. And even NASA pays people $19,000 to stay in bed for two months. Now in that case, you actually have to like stay in bed the whole time. You literally can't leave your bed. Morning, Sleeping Beauty. And I kind of just included that one as a joke, but there are many sleep studies out there that are legit. And even ZipRecruiter says that you make about $35.27 an hour participating in sleep studies. Obviously, it's not gonna be a way to make like a full-time income or anything like that, but it's an interesting one to look into. I'll give it a 5.5 out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, if you appreciate my team and I spending hundreds of hours making each and every one of these videos, let us know by gently tapping that like button and we'll make more of them in the future. Next is going to be renting out useful household items. And these could include things such as tools, appliances, and equipment. Because let's be honest, how often do you actually use your lawnmower or weed whacker? And you can actually do this very easily on platforms such as Neighbor, Fat Llama, or Rent My Items. So you'd basically just list different items that are laying around the house anyways that they could rent on the platform. And the platform pretty much takes care of all of the rest for you. And then if you ever need to actually use the item, you just temporarily close down the listing. It's that simple. And there's actually this funny article article I saw where this guy talks about who is paying these prices because he's sharing all the dumb stuff that he rents out. For instance, he rents out a cornhole game, which is I think everyone's probably played that before. You throw little bean bags at a board as a hole in the center of it. And if you're able to get it in the hole, you score a point. He also rents out beer pong supplies and a beer pong table. And he even says that he makes up to $2,000 every single weekend just renting these things out. And he's only doing it as a side hustle. And here's a list of other things that he rents out just to give you some ideas. So yeah, as you can see, pretty easy way of making money. I'll go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, guys, I was able to earn a full-time income from YouTube and you can earn a full-time income from YouTube as well. And on Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm gonna be hosting a live training where I'm gonna be revealing the five biggest secrets on growing and monetizing your YouTube channel. And you can do this with less than one hour of work per day. So I'm basically gonna be giving you a free roadmap to growing your YouTube channel. And I'm gonna cover everything you need to know from choosing your niche to choosing video ideas, and then the important parts of the process when it comes to making YouTube videos. And I'll take you through the steps and strategies that help me achieve a full-time income from YouTube within a few months. And during the live training, I'm actually gonna be giving away a free mini course that took me a ridiculous amount of time to make. And I'm gonna be answering any questions that you have about YouTube with a live Q and A. And there are limited seats, so make sure to sign up by clicking the link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below and I'll see you there. Next is going to be renting out a driveway. Yes, this is one that not everybody can do. You do have to have a driveway and you probably have to have a driveway in an area that people would actually wanna park on. And this is especially good if you live right next to maybe like a big stadium or some kind of big event that happens every year. But if you do live in that kind of place, you probably already know about this anyways. But basically you can charge people a ton of money just to park if you live right next to like the Kansas City Chiefs football stadium, for instance. But even if you don't live in a super convenient location, there are actually apps that still will help you do this. For instance, Just Park, Parkable, and Spot Hero basically allow individuals to list their driveways for rent and connect with drivers in need of parking spaces. So as an example, let's say somebody works like two blocks away from you in an office building and they just don't have any good parking spaces or they have to pay for parking. They could just make a deal with you and then just park there every day. And then all they have to do is just walk two blocks away. And here's a story about a caregiver that makes $10,000 a year renting out his driveway. Like literally like probably the most passive thing you could possibly do. Here's another story of somebody who makes about $200 per month 
per spot that they rent out, right? It's literally just a piece of concrete that's just sitting there doing nothing and you can make $200 a month from it. And if you have a big driveway, well, wow. You can make a lot more. So yeah, this is another excellent way of actually making money that's like kind of like real passive income. You know, you basically just have to set it up one time and then it's good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. All right, so this next one is not quite as passive and it does require a little bit of expertise, but still a really good one. And that is domains trading. So this is basically where you buy different website domains that you think are gonna go up in value over time. And then you basically just hold them for a few years, do absolutely nothing with them, and then just sell them a few years later for sometimes 10 times the price. And this is honestly one of the most common ways that I've seen people make a little bit of passive income on the side. And it's pretty predictable. You know, for instance, when crypto or Bitcoin or, you know, Ethereum or whatever started to get really popular, a bunch of people just bought up every single crypto related platform, right? So crypto.com and cryptocoins.com and coinbase.com and cointelegraph.com, like based, literally anything that's even loosely related to cryptocurrency. And a lot of those domains are worth thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars now. And a lot of people bought them up for like 10 bucks or 50 bucks back in the day. So if you can foresee something getting really big in the next few years, like, you know, <coughs> AI or maybe <coughs> virtual reality, <coughs> artificial intelligence, <coughs> augmented reality, something along those lines, you can actually just go ahead and buy these domains. And then a few years from now, after doing absolutely nothing with them for that entire time, you can just go ahead and sell them. And there's a guy who's literally made millions of dollars selling domain names to big brands like CNN. And some of his sales included dot com for 8.9 million. I might have to bleep that out, uh, but I think you know what I mean. And he also sold iReport.com to CNN for $750,000. Now, of course, he got into this game very early. So he got into buying the domains probably in the 90s and early 2000s. So you're not going to be getting those really big domain names these days. But with that being said, there's still a lot of trends that are happening. Just pay attention to the trends that are popping up and then buy domain names that are related to those trends. So yeah, this one does require some expertise. You do have to practice. You do have to kind of do some research. Search. But once you've bought the domains, it's extremely passive. And so I'm going to go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be creating a boring YouTube channel. Now, you might be asking me, Shane, why would you ever create a boring YouTube channel? YouTube's supposed to be lots of fun, right? Well, yeah, YouTube is a lot of fun. I like watching YouTube videos, but let's be honest, probably about half the time you watch YouTube videos, it's not for fun. It's for education because you're looking something up. And somebody out there is making these educational videos that people look up all the time and then end up watching. And is it the funnest thing in the world to make educational videos? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But with that being said, if you find the right topic and you start making videos about it, that is a great way to make a ton of money because most people who want to start on YouTube want to become vloggers or video game streamers, or they want to make like a mukbang channel or something like that, something that's fun. So there's a lot more opportunity to make these boring channels that are in the educational niches. And that's exactly what I've done. I focus on helping other people. I wanna solve real problems for real people out there. I'm not necessarily trying to make entertaining content. And a lot of people see, you know, the Mr. Beast of the world making $54 million a year and the Jake Pauls of the world making like $40 million a year. And they think, oh, entertainment must be the way to make money. That's gotta be the best way to do it, right? And the truth is, that is kind of like a winner take all market. Most of the people who start entertainment channels don't make any money at all. And in fact, a lot of them lose money. Whereas with educational channels, there's a lot less competition. There's a lot less people doing it. And so it's much easier to make money. And the coolest thing is when you make this searchable content, every single time you make a video, it's like you're putting a soldier out there that's gonna live like an entire lifetime for you and every single moment of their life is dedicated to bringing you more views, subscribers, and making you more money. So you do have to do the work up front, but once you put those videos out there, they're gonna be searchable for years. I get over a million searches a month just from my YouTube channel alone, just from this one that you're watching alone, I get over a million views a month from. 
and that's all searchable views, right? Just people finding me from search. In fact, I think this last month I got over 2 million views from search alone. So yeah, if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to focus on solving other people's problems and, you know, putting off the fun a little bit longer, you know, for a few years, then you can just have fun for the rest of your life because you started a YouTube channel that's making you passive income forever. So yeah, absolutely love this business model. This is the exact business model that I do. So I, you know, it would be ridiculous for me to not mention it in the video. I see a lot of other YouTubers that talk about all these side hustles and they, for some reason, they never mention the side hustle that they're actually doing, I guess, because they don't want to create competition or something like that. But yeah, this is, in my opinion, without a doubt, the best way of making money. I, with this channel alone, I make over six figures a month and I'd only have to work four hours a week in order to maintain it. So yeah, this one absolutely gets a 10 out of 10 opportunity score. Absolutely love this one. And by the way, I do train a few people every single month on how to grow on YouTube. It's actually my passion. I love the subject of growing and making money from YouTube. So I train a few people every month. And if you want to apply for my coaching, you can with the link down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below. Next is going to be buying IP. Now, what exactly is IP? It's intellectual property. Just kidding, that is IP as well. But in this particular case, you're gonna be buying internet protocol or IP addresses. And every single time you log onto the internet, you have what's known as an IP address. And unless you have really good VPNs or you're using some kind of private server or something along those lines, all of these companies can track exactly who you are and exactly what you're looking up. And a lot of people don't like that. And so they'll actually rent out other people's IP address. And that's where you come in as the person who is basically running it out to them. And now this is very passive once you create your IP addresses. And a lot of the time you can actually make more money than what you're paying for your internet service provider every single month just by doing this. Now there's several different companies you can do this with. One of them is IPv4 Global. Another one is loris.net. And yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. The income potential is relatively capped. I mean, I guess you could have like an IP address empire, but that kind of defeats the purpose of doing this because that would be a lot of extra work. So I'll go ahead and give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be storing people's stuff. So there have been so many different billionaires. Yes, billionaires with a B that have been created in the United States as well as other countries that started storage businesses. Storage is a massive business in the United States as well as a bunch of other countries. And did you know that if you have a house and you have some free space, you can actually rent out that space. And you can do this on several different platforms such as Neighbor, Sparefoot, and Store at My House. And there's a story of this lady who made an extra $26,000 just renting out her extra yard space on an app, right? So you don't even have to have necessarily house space, just space in your yard. Here's a Reddit post of somebody who's making over $600 a month, literally just letting people park their vehicles and store their stuff on his property. And yeah, there's literally countless different stories of people doing this. And even if you live in kind of a small or medium sized apartment, you can still make money doing this because the average rental price for a storage space, even a small storage space is 60 to $180 per month. And the average rental price for a climate controlled storage space is 75 to $225 a month. So if you already have your air con on in your house anyways, guess what? That's a climate controlled space and you can make even more money. So yeah, this is basically the Uber of the storage and rental market. Really like this one, super passive, like truly actually passive once you get it set up. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be investing in bonds. Now, if you ever hung out at a country club or just hung out with older people, they really like investing in bonds. You know, there's so many different things that they could invest in, but for some reason they choose bonds. Why is that? Well, because it's a super, super low risk way of investing your money and making sure that you get a return from it while also keeping it extremely liquid so you can pull it out as soon as you need to. And the average return on corporate bonds is about about four to five percent per year and historic rates have been even higher sometimes up to 15 percent and there's a 30-year average of about 6.1 percent right now but that doesn't mean that it's going to be that high in the future now treasury bonds are a little lower at about three to four percent and municipal bonds are about two percent but these are some of the safest investments that you can make now of course i'm not a financial advisor so make sure you do your own research here but with that being said this is truly a passive way of making money and if you have a bunch of money sitting there you might as well put them in something like bonds or in invest them in something else. So I'll go ahead and give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Another thing you could invest in is index funds. And for instance, if you were to invest in the S&P 500, it's returned about 10% every year 
since we can remember. And the S&P 500 is basically the 500 largest companies. So this is another one that is considered to be an extremely safe investment. You can make a ton of money with it. Um, I think a lot of people know about index funds. I'm a big fan of them. I'm going to give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Now, a slightly riskier type of investing that's been getting extremely popular lately is actually investing in art. And there's a bunch of different platforms you can do this on. For instance, Artsy, Sachi Arts, and Christie's. Now, art as an asset class, especially fine art, has been doing extremely well over the last 20 years. And in many cases, it's actually outperformed a lot of the other standard asset classes. Now, does that mean it's going to continue in the next 20 years? Absolutely not. But it is a way of diversifying your portfolio. And so therefore, I thought I would go ahead and put it in the video. And the most expensive painting in the world, the Salvatore Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci, was sold for a whopping $450 million. And billionaires, for instance, invest in art all the time. So they think it's a good work worthwhile investment. So yeah, this is a decent one to look into, especially if you want to diversify your portfolio. I'll give this one a six out of 10 opportunity score. The next one is also much more risky, but it does have the potential for a higher return. And that is P2P lending, also known as person to person lending. And this is basically where you lend money to other people that are out on the internet that are also using the same website or app as you. And then you get to earn back interest on that money. So this is basically what banks and financial institutions do to us. And so there's different platforms like Prosper, Lending Club, or Funding Circle that allow you to basically do it to other people without having a bank or a financial institution as the intermediary. And they do take a small fee for that. Here's a guy who earns $300 to $400 a month in interest. And the average return for something like Prosper is going to be about 5.7%. But people who are very good at choosing who to lend out to can make much more money than this. So yeah, this one's decent. I'll go ahead and give it a 6.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be advertising on your car. And this is literally where you just wrap your car in some sort of advertisement from a company. And there's many different companies you can do this with. Uh, Carvertize, Rapify, and Sticker Ride are a few of them. And as long as you don't mind being kind of like a walking, or in this case, driving advertisement, you can make some good passive income from this. And people report that they make an extra 70 to $180 monthly, and this is completely passive. And on the platforms, they even say that you can make anywhere from $100 to $500 per month. So yeah, this one is super passive, hard to argue here, as long as you're okay with being a driving advertisement, this one's great. I'll give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be selling your notes online. So if you're somebody who has maybe taken classes at a university or even a high school in some cases, and you've taken notes on the different classes, or if you're just somebody who's really good at certain subjects and you're good at taking notes on those subjects, this could be a great opportunity for you. So here are some examples, Study Soup as well as Stuvia. Those are two really good ones. And believe it or not, there are people out there that made $2 million in revenue literally just selling their study notes. So this lady, for instance, she was a full-time emergency room nurse and she took really good notes in college in her nursing days. And she built a community on TikTok of 687 thousand people and then she basically drove people to her etsy store where she sold her old notes so that's a perfect example of how you could make money doing this so yeah really good one this is less passive than a lot of the other ones on the list so for that reason i'll go ahead and give it an eight out of ten opportunity score next is going to be purchasing atms right so you've probably used an atm before you put your card in put your password in and you withdraw money from it well what you didn't know is a lot of those atms are actually owned by individuals not necessarily companies and every single time you withdraw from the ATM, it usually charges you anywhere from $1.50 to $3.50. And a friend of mine, Paul Alex, actually does this for a living. So he basically started his first ATM machine and he started making $500 a month from it. And about a year and a half in, he already had 30 ATMs and he was making $15,000 a month. And the average surcharge income for an ATM is about $450 a month. And it also takes time to find a good location and get it set up. But with that being said, after you've had that initial investment, it is relatively passive. With that being said, if you are going to make this into like an ATM empire, you are going to have to hire somebody to go and replace the cash for you. But yeah, this is a really good one. I'll go ahead and give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be selling 3D designs. And this one is one that I'm very bullish on in the near future, because I think with augmented reality, as well as virtual reality, and also 3D printing, selling 3D designs is going to be huge. Maybe you should buy some domains related to it. <clears throat> 
Um, so there's a bunch of different websites you can do this on Shapeways, Turbo Squid, CG Trader, and Sketchfab, for instance. And there's many different things you can make this on, for instance, gaming, architecture, animation, and even product design. And just as one example of the use cases for this type of thing, when 3D printing gets just a little bit better, you're going to be able to actually design your own Halloween costumes as well as cosplay costumes. So if you want to be somebody for Halloween, um, you basically will just have to measure your dimensions, then you design the costume that you want online, and then it would automatically print it for you using a 3D printer and they would ship it to you. So I can almost guarantee you this is going to be a massive business here in the next few years. So if you want to get into this and start designing things and posting them on these websites, could be a really good opportunity for you. For instance, this is a design right here uh, that is being sold for $2,400. But typically 3D character models cost between $50 and $500. And those are for the basic ones. For the mid-range 3D character models, they usually charge between $500 to $5,000. And for high-end 3D character models, they charge $5,000 or more. So this is a huge business and there's real money in this. So yeah, really good one. I think this one's gonna be great in the next few years. I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, I did a video on the 10 easiest AI side hustles that went semi-viral. People were loving it. And you can check that video out by clicking right here.